This is Tim Petrie, NUSU Extension Livestock Marketing Economist. Today we're going to visit about the cattle price situation outlook, particularly as it pertains to backgrounding. A little disclaimer, I'm doing this on November 9th with November 8th prices, so you may be viewing this in a week or two or later and prices will be different because they're changing as I speak, so please keep that in mind. So, you know, this is the time of the year where we're cattle producers are making the decision whether to background or sell. I'm doing this recording in conjunction with three of my counterparts and they also have a very important message uh, to you and I'll be referring that uh, to, as we go along here. Corn prices are high and so Ka Carl Hoppy is gonna be visiting with you about alternative rations and feed. So important to listen to his. Obviously, uh, cost and returns and projecting them and working with your lender are very important. So Brian Parman is going to be discussing some alternative budget scenarios and uh, uh, different uh, weight groups and so on. So be sure to listen to his. And then also uh, the health is very important for these new calves that we back on so on. So Dr. Jerry Estaca has uh, uh, health management concerns. And so I urge you to view all of those videos. But anyway, today we're just going to discuss kind of what the prices are for calves going in and then what you might expect for prices coming out of a backgrounding program. So here are some of the fundamentals that are affecting prices now. Uh, obviously, both corn and fed cattle prices are the two most important factors that affect feeder cattle prices. And uh, uh, both of those are relatively high. Corn prices at ethanol plants now are 605 to 655. But on the other hand, fed cattle prices are the highest they've been since 2015. And what's important is also that the uh, live cattle futures into next year when the uh, feedlots that buy your background cattle, when those cattle will, were finished. And so those are things that we're going to visit with. We do have a smaller calf crop, which is very supportive to calf and feeder cattle prices. Uh, as I do this, April live cattle trading at over 158, so there's good demand for over 700 pound steers that'll make that April contract. But again, later contracts still are above what they've been the last couple of years. And so prices are moving cyclically higher. Uh, on the fed cattle side, we're gonna challenge those 2014, 15 highs and, and feeder cattle probably in, in a year or so. So uh, that uh, means higher prices ahead, uh, but, Cattle and corn prices, although moving cyclical higher, are volatile. There's a lot of geopolitical factors, weather, corn prices, everything else that causes volatility in the market. So we will view that and maybe some uh, price risk management, as, a, as I say down on the line there, might be something to consider. So it's important to compute your costs, obviously, develop budgets, discuss with your lender, uh, look at Dr. Parman's budget that he presents and, and uh, Carl Hoppe's uh, alternate feeds and so on and the health issues from Jerry. But we do uh, expect seasonal volatility to continue. So even though prices might be cyclical higher, we certainly should consider price risk management strategies. Start off with corn then. As we mentioned, you know, last couple of years, corn prices uh, have been higher, but that doesn't mean that we can't background calves. And for example, uh, I like to use Omaha prices because uh, that's where the feedlots are that might buy our backgrounded cattle. And they look at then what the distant fed cattle futures are and what corn prices are. And that determines what they can pay for, for a feeder cattle. But corn prices in Omaha last week averaged 723. On the other hand, you go above that at a North Dakota ethanol plant today is paying 605. So our corn up here may be over a dollar cheaper than down here. So that might bode well for a backgrounding. We can backgrounding. The feedlots prefer to buy the heavier weight cattle that have been backgrounded cheaper then. And, and uh, then they can finish them off with the uh, higher corn prices. So, you know, certainly uh, backgrounding might be an option for us. But the market is very volatile. Um, people ask me, why is the feeder cattle future so volatile? And one of the reasons uh, is because corn prices are so volatile. Let's just look at what happened this year and apps could uh, happen again next year. Start off the year back in, in February, uh, you know, corn prices were down there about 590 and, and uh, feeder cattle futures up there 188. 
And then a uh, report came out that we're going to have a couple million fewer acres of corn. And then Putin invades Ukraine and Powell, the corn prices go skyrocketing up there to 760 or so. And likewise, then there's that relationship change corn 10 cents a bushel, change feeder cattle a buck in the opposite direction. And so that kind of played in here and starting off there at 188 with feeder cattle back there in February. And so by June, when corn prices had spiked there, we'd bring feeder cattle down to 171. But then, you know, it looked like we're going to get a good harvest and weather was conducive in the corn belt and some issues with hurricane. Uh, that they could ship. And so then corn prices plummet back down to 570 and feeder cattle go up to 199. But then uh, harvest approaching, it doesn't look like we're going to get the yields possibly that we had and maybe some other geopolitical f features going on there. And so then corn goes back up to, you know, that uh, 675 to $7 area and feeder cattle go back down to 175. But now in the last month or so, you know, corn is stabilized and went down the last week or so. And so feeder cattle back up there to about 180. So, you know, looking into uh, uh, next year here with these January feeder cattle, uh, you know, that might be something that we could expect around 180 for prices. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, here's uh, uh, the calf crop. It went down, you see, the last several years, four years in a row. So uh, fewer calves is certainly supportive to uh, prices with fewer. I think we've got about a million fewer calves to sell this year. So that's supportive to prices. Then uh, let's go to fed steer prices here and just talk a little bit about the key that would be the same on the previous charts. The red line is always this year's price. And then the blue line is 2021. The purple line is uh, 2020 and then the green line is 2019 and so let's and then the uh, orange squares there are the futures market for next year and uh, and if there's a still a, a futures market trading for this uh, year 2022 that would be a red square and that's the case for the dece cattle futures up there but anyway fed cattle prices have averaged 20 dollars above last year supported by pretty good domestic demand for beef and then record exports. And so again, uh, we went up the entire year from about 140 to uh, 152 last week was the highest price since June of 2015. And then again, what's important are those uh, orange squares there to the futures for next year that uh, feedlots buying our backgrounded calves would use as a guide to what they can pay for feeder cattle. And they are actually up at record high levels. Uh, 2014 average fed cattle price was 153.84. And uh, if you average those six futures contracts for next year, they average 157. So that would be record prices for fed cattle. Obviously supportive for feedlots paying for our background cattle coming out whenever that might be, January, February, March, or whatever. And then uh, not on the key, but on the top, very top left up there, uh, another $10 higher on futures for 2024, but uh, probably not as important for the backgrounding that we're talking about here, but we do look for cyclical higher prices for all cattle for the next several years. So let's go to the 506 pound uh, steers. Uh, and what they're doing, because uh, in some cases, you're just going to feed your own calves. So you need to price them into a backgrounding program at the current market price, or in some cases, you're going to buy them. <laughs> so uh, calf prices have been supported by the fewer numbers, even though uh, feed prices are high and and also by those distant fed cattle futures. And so uh, last week, we averaged uh, right at a, just under 207. But again, that's the average. There's a wide range in calf prices we'll look at in a minute that might show some opportunities for backgrounding or selling and, and so on. So we, uh, when we look at the market report, we'll get a better idea of that, of what we can price our calves in. But anyway, they're better. And again, on a cyclical basis, expect them to go up. But here we're kind of interested in what's the current calf prices and then is there potential for backgrounding. So go to the heavyweight yearling prices, which would be the backgrounded cattle. And again, they're been averaging $20 above last year, a little seasonal weakness like on the calves here, but 
trading in that you know 175 to 180 area now and kind of that's where the uh, November futures are but uh, again our background calves be coming out in January February March maybe even into April in a few cases and, and in the cases of heifers and so let's look at those uh, orange uh, squares up there and so uh, starting off in January there we're trading right at 180 and then move up to 182 in March and 185 in, in uh, April. And so uh, that would be somewhat prices that we could expect for spring calves. Or if you want to make sure you can do some price risk management and, and lock in prices there using some kind of price risk management that we'll visit with in a minute. So again, it all depends on your budget, what you price calves in and and in your budget, what your expected prices are out. And so we're just kind of giving you a guide here. Here's the market report for last week for calves sold in North Dakota. And a lot of issues pertaining to background that we can talk here. Again, let's go to that purple circle there in the minute. I mentioned that we're just under 207 there on 550 to six weight calves, but that's an average, a wide range in, in prices there for calves all the way from 187 up to 227 and so with that wide range uh you know it, it, if you're buying calves and you're looking at at the high end of those 227 calves up there are 1300 dollars ahead you know you're going to have to have a good price coming out i think to make that work again you have to plug it into to brian's budgets and on the other hand if you go down to 190 or so you know, you cheapen them up by a couple hundred dollars and maybe good uh, you know, chance to background those calves and add value to them. So it all depends on what you price your calves in and so on and, and wide range there and know what you have and what you're going to buy. The other uh, nice issue to talk about is uh, you see those big discounts for those fleshy calves going on down there. And so feed is high. And so you don't want to get them too fleshy because they're going to be discounted in the market. So you've paid more for feed for a discount. And so I know we all like to feed our cattle well and see them gain weight and so on. But let's just be careful and not get them too fleshy. And, and uh, so we don't get uh, discounted on them. The other thing is heifers are severely discounted this time of the year. And so uh, go to that arrow up there, uh, an example, those four 50 to 500 weight heifers uh, are, you know, at 193 across there in that arrow compared to 223, 224 average price on the steers. So, you know, you've got a $30 discount there on heifers. And so we do keep a lot of heifers in North Dakota in background for a very good reason, because every 50 pounds they gain on steers, they gain in price, whether the market's going up or down. And so go to that bottom arrow on the chart there, you see uh, 750 to eight weight, to 775 pound steers at 174, heifers only at 170, so only a $4 uh, discount there. So we can add value, the more weight we put on heifers by backgrounding them, the closer they get to steer prices and maybe easier to pick up money there. And we do do a lot of backgrounding of heifers and I would encourage you to consider that. And, and Brian is gonna show you some budgets there. So, you know, hindsight is 2020, whatever. And we know what's happened before looking ahead to 2023. And there, uh, even though we have cyclically higher prices expected actually for the next several years, there's still risk with all the different factors that can affect the market from uh, geopolitical issues. You know, uh, uh, the, the Russia-Ukraine war is still going on and North Korea is shooting missiles into the sea by Japan and Brazil just has a new president, know what's gonna happen there. And then you throw in all the drought or blizzards or uh, other things that can affect the market and, and diseases, even influenza and, and so on. And, and when we sell these backgrounded cattle, it's at one point in time. And so we're risking what the market is at that point in time. So even though cyclically higher prices are likely, there could be something that affects the market there for a month or two that would cause lower prices. And remember back to that 
that corn and feeder cow chart. So certainly just because we expect uh, higher prices cyclically, uh, let's not throw price risk management out the window. And, and, and I would encourage you to visit with your lender and uh, discuss whether that should be part of your marketing plan. There are a number of price risk management tools that we can use and I don't have time today to explain all of them to you and would be glad to provide information education on that and you'd need to see your extension agent and, and and have them set up a meeting but you know maybe we could forward contract with a feedlot or internet auctions if you're familiar with futures and options something you could consider a livestock risk protection is something i'm going to visit with you a little bit but again don't have much time it might be a combination of these different tools that you would use but you know if you don't manage risk and again it could be risky into that time period so uh, again discuss with your lender so here's the march feeder cattle futures contract the high loan closes and then you know the markets went up and down we're right at 182.15 a close today and and uh, there's the cash settlement price below that uh, lrp is based on that i'll visit with you in a minute so you know you're the market now is saying that we should have up in the 180 to above in in uh, prices this spring when your backgrounded cattle come out uh, uh another tool that you might consider is uh, livestock risk protection it does give us a lot of flexibility in that we can do both steers and heifers and uh and the the real advantage i think of it is that we can do any number of head of futures contract or options contract fifty thousand pounds but here we can do a few head and you might want to do a few head to begin with and it's a very good tool to learn about price risk management without having to risk a lot of money and then you could do a few now and a few later or or if you're familiar with it, you could do more. And so uh, every afternoon at 3.30, the website shown there in blue, uh, USDA just puts out what their price offerings are uh, for the, the, the date today and how much it would cost you. And the nearest contract that we can get now is matures February 7th. And every day that just goes a day later. And then you can you know, go into March, April, May, all the way through for a year if you want to, but here backgrounding mainly interest in January, February, and March. And just uh, for example, I use the, the highest uh, offering price for these categories, but they offer a whole series of prices under this, for instance, going across for that top 800 pound steer for a February 7th maturity date there at 180.53 is the highest price, but they offer a $2 down prices way down 10 or 12 uh, units down and you could even get a premium down less than a dollar but wouldn't have a lot of coverage there. And, uh, you know, the current CME cash settlement price is 176.59 that's the price you're really betting against changes daily and uh, it's it's on the CME website and the history is shown back there on that chart where the March feeder cattle futures are. And then uh, again, and go into March, we can get a little higher price uh, for February, cattle coming out in February up to the beginning of March, or we can look in a contract maturing in April for those cattle coming out in, in, in March and the prices again are going up seasonally there. So almost get to almost 182 for that uh, April 4th contract. And then again, we have contracts for heifers. Heifers are always 10% below steers, the price offering and, and so on. So uh, we could do, uh, you know, uh, cover both our steers and heifers. And you see January futures, uh, 179.90 and March and 182.15 correspond uh, quite well with those prices being offered. So again, I'm not advocating any one price risk management strategy over the other. If you're familiar with one and it works well for you, use it. And if you need more education, want to investigate some others, I urge you to do that. But anyway, I'll wrap up here. That's a little bit of our expectations for price. And again, I urge you to look at those other videos of the other folks and do some uh, backgrounding. And uh, with that, then we're going to uh, close. Mm -hmm.